Spirit of the North is a third person adventure game about to release on the Nintendo Switch. It joins a long list of games that are foregoing traditional storytelling in favour of telling their story through the journey you take and the visuals you see on the screen. But is this journey worth taking? Well, I'm Glenn for Switch Up. Thank you to the publishing team for this review code. And now, let's find out. Spirit of the North is fairly light on story, at least in the traditional sense anyway. Instead, it has you go on a journey as I mentioned in the intro, whilst drip feeding you snippets of information and narrative through its visuals rather than through words or cutscenes. The game is set in, or is at least heavily inspired by, Iceland and uses certain aspects of Nordic folklore throughout. You play as a red fox who very early on becomes entwined with the spirit of the northern light and from this point onwards can call upon this spirit from within him to guide him on his journey. Gameplay wise, Spirit of the North uses a very similar premise to games such as Rhyme, Journey or Absu. You navigate a fairly linear path throughout, partaking in platforming or having to solve puzzles in order to be able to access the next area. The game's mechanics are never explained to you explicitly, in keeping with the vague nature of the storytelling, you are instead given button prompts whenever you can interact with something. The main gameplay mechanic relates to lighting up stone carvings by transferring a spirit into them, with the spirits being found in certain spots around each area. Transferring a spirit into a stone carving will generally cause an element of the world to change, such as a stone wall collapsing or water filling in a dry riverbed. These changes will assist you in reaching an otherwise inaccessible area. Sometimes it will not be as simple as just lighting up one, as you may need to find a few of the stone carvings, each needing the previous one to have been lit so you can access the next. As the game progresses, new elements are introduced that act as gateways to further areas such as switches, air tunnels or collapsing platforms. As I mentioned, the game is mostly linear. What I mean by this is that the path you must take to move forward will be a linear one until you reach the next puzzle area which is more open in nature as you explore your surroundings to work out how to continue on your path. Sometimes the stone carvings are hidden from plain sight so you will need to explore each area well. The vast majority of the puzzles follow the same path of causing a change in the environment and then using it to move on, but as you do move on you will unlock new powers for the fox and these will start to play into the puzzles such as having you have to cleanse certain stone carvings before you can light them up or using an obtained power to pass through certain walls or even dashing at speed across larger gaps. To use these powers you must be in possession of a spirit, so if you do use one on a stone carving it's always a good idea to seek another one out quickly or backtrack to the previous place you found one so that once you get to the new area you have the capacity to use a power should you need to. There are six chapters contained within the game, with one leading directly into the next, and auto save points appear fairly regularly by way of these wind chimes which will activate as you pass them. As well as looking for the paths forward, there is also a form of collectible found within Spirit of the North. There are the remains of 28 dead shaman to find, hidden just off the beaten path, although to collect one you must first locate their staff, which will be hidden somewhere else in the area. Once you find the shaman, you drop the staff at his feet and you will then earn that collectible. Due to having to find the staff first, plus the fact that the shaman themselves are very well hidden, makes finding all of these quite the challenge. One thing I did find a little odd in this respect though, was that returning the staff to one of the shaman seems mandatory in order to finish a particular chapter. Now I don't want to get into spoiler territory, but feel it's important to mention this as it could stump a few people for a while, and I really don't like it when games start to blur the lines between optional collectibles and items that are necessary for progression. It just causes unnecessary confusion. Some of the platforming can also be a little bit awkward, especially towards the end where you have accumulated more powers and need to use these in conjunction with certain jumps. Plus it can be a bit cumbersome having to constantly look for another source of spirit power, particularly when in the middle of a complicated jump or sequence. It never becomes overly frustrating, but again it just seems a bit of a strange gameplay choice to have you potentially backtracking quite so often, even if it's never very far. In terms of the controls, you move the fox with the left stick bark with the A button which is needed to solve some of the puzzles and a variety of other skills are learnt and assigned to buttons as you play. Movement of the fox is fine for the most part although he does have quite a wide turning circle which doesn't allow you to be quite as precise as I would have liked on some of the jumps, especially on more narrow platforms. 
I also found the jump to have a slight delay if you've been holding the run button down just before pressing it. The trick it seems is to ease off the run button just before you do press jump. Gameplay has a nice balance of the travel you expect in such games and simple puzzling which in turn calls for some light exploration. As mentioned, some of the platforming segments can be a bit awkward, but overall it scores 14 out of 20. Controls most certainly aren't bad, although the Fox isn't quite as nimble as I feel he should be, and they also score 14 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, a huge component in these sorts of games, the whole is definitely greater than the sum of its parts. Now what I mean by this is that the overall aesthetic is very pleasing to the eye, but closer inspection does show a few technical issues. Starting with the positives then, the backdrops as you move through the game world really are quite beautiful. From the snow and ice featured in the early game with its whites and glacial blues complemented by the reds and purples of the night sky, to the rich green fields with winds chopping through the grass found further up the mountain. More than once I found myself stopping just to look at the backdrops and take it all in. It really can look quite majestic at times. Up close though is where the small chinks in the armour can be seen. Finer details of the environment such as rock faces or some light and shadow will load in as you move around the world. It's not horrific, we're not talking about whole mountains or trees popping in, it's just small details but it's enough to act as a minor immersion breaker which is unfortunate. A close up of the fox also exposes a few flaws with the colours of his fur bleeding into the surroundings. Things do take a noticeable hit in handheld mode with everything looking quite blurry and I did have one instance of a crash. Well not a crash exactly, I paused the game in order to put it from handheld mode back into docked mode and it just wouldn't let me unpause it no matter what I tried. I needed to restart the game and lost about 20 minutes of progress being taken back to the last checkpoint. I had just solved a puzzle so needed to redo it which only took a few minutes now as I knew what I was doing but it was annoying nonetheless. Audio, another important part of the experience in these games, is certainly strong. The soundtrack has that solemn, quite enchanting quality to it that really does elevate the journey sections of games such as these. Thankfully the music here is of a very high standard. The use of piano and stringed instruments creates a quite beautiful composition that manages to convey a loneliness of the journey but mixed with a triumphant tone for each step accomplished. There are only a few different pieces of music, only two really that I could clearly distinguish from each other with a lot of it being repeated and this is a shame because what's here is so good you just want a bit more. It would have been great for each chapter to have its own clear score but it's credit to the quality of what is here that even with limited tracks it never feels repetitive. Visuals paint an environment that looks tranquil yet intriguing and are a pleasure to look at although they do falter under closer inspection and score 15 out of 20. Audio sets a scene that is equal parts serene and melancholic and it's a shame there isn't a bit more of it but even so it scores 16 out of 20. Spirit of the North costs £19.99, $24 or €24.99 or $31.50. Australian There is a 20% discount at launch and this actually lasts until the 20th of May. As mentioned previously, there are 6 chapters in the game and it took me about 5, maybe 6 hours to complete it. I only found a few of the shaman and there as I said are 28 of these in total. And I did like the idea of this particular collectible due to the nature of having to find both the staff and the person. It almost changes how you play a little bit, making it feel like something worth playing through again for. Although there was that slight negative with one of them feeling mandatory. There is a physical edition of the game as well and I found it being advertised online for about £25 so this is another avenue if you are a physical collector. Value on the whole scores 14 out of 20. To conclude, Spirits of the North is a good game to play in small increments over a weekend or when you are having a particularly lazy day. At between 4-6 to six hours long it may not offer enough for some people but I found it a refreshing change of pace, both in a literal sense regarding the gameplay but also being able to chip away at something in bite sized chunks yet still finish it in a short time period. Some of the gameplay mechanics are a little awkward and the visuals falter under close scrutiny but I still enjoyed my time with it and found it a journey well worth taking. Spirit of the North gets a switch up score of 
Thank you as always everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do remember to leave a like if you like what you've just seen. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe wherever you are and as always, happy gaming.